Join us now on Flickr at flickr.com slash groups slash art of photography. Welcome to the Art of Photography. I'm Ted Forbes, and today what we're going to do is um, start talking about darkroom process a little bit, and specifically uh, how you're going to develop negatives and/or paper eventually. And what I want to do is this episode is going to get kind of split out a little bit because what I want to do today is just talk about chemicals and what's involved, and then the next episode we'll talk about the technique and how you get into it and what you're going to do uh, with these chemicals. But essentially, when you are developing film, there are three chemicals involved. You have, and, and only three. So you have developer. You you have a stop bath and you have a fixer. Okay, now what do those do? Well, essentially, film has a layer of coating on it called an emulsion, and it is it's basically made of silver gelatin and it is light sensitive. And so, when you take a picture, darker areas uh, won't. Uh, it, it's not as sensitive to those, but then the brighter areas it is sensitive to, and it actually has a chemical transformation when light hits it. That's why you don't want to expose film to light ever, uh, because unless you're taking a picture. And then what you want to do is uh, when you bring that into the dark Dark room. Uh, we need to have it in a light tight environment and I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, but what we're going to do is pass a series of three chemicals over the top. Okay, and the first is developer. And all developer does is it simply develops uh, the silver uh, particles that have been exposed to light and starts to turn it into an image. So once you're out of the developer, you go into the second chemical, which is called a stop bath. And the stop bath, what that does is it stops the developer, and then finally you put it into a fixer. And what the fixer does is it simply kind of fix. It does a couple things nowadays, but uh, it fixes the negative. It washes all the unused silver or that's dead off the top of it, and you end up with your with your negative. And then it also hardens the negative too, so you can work with it whether you're going to develop it or scan it or whatever it is you're going to do. Um, now, as far as uh, chemicals go, there are several all-purpose developers. Um, actually, there's hundreds of developers. Um, and you might get confused online. This is Agfa Rodinol right here, and Rodinol is really easy to use. It's a liquid developer, so I'm going to mix this with water in a certain dilution and then just use that so it lasts forever. Um, I would highly recommend if you're starting out not to get too crazy about uh, reading reviews of developers. I would get something that's simple that works, and then after you've run a few rolls of film through that, then what you can do is uh, experiment with some other developers and take it from there and find one that really suits you. But what I would recommend if you're just starting out, and again, check the show notes for links on this at thepublicbroadcast.com and then click on the art of photography you'll find the show um, but anyway um, what I would suggest is either ag for rod and all it's very affordable uh, and it goes a long way I would suggest Kodak D76 which is another one and uh, those are really the two basic ones to get you going I think if you've never done this before um, the D76 will come in a bag as a powder form and you're gonna have to mix it up but it's not hard to do just follow the directions on the bottle um, you're gonna mix it with water and uh, you know, just make sure it's it's all dissolved and then you're good to go. Now, speaking of that, anytime you mix chemicals, you're going to want to go either to a photo supply store, this one's kind of dented in, but you're going to want to get some of these um, uh, uh, liquid containers. And you'll need to get three of them, obviously, stop bath, de excuse me, developer, stop bath, and fixer. And this is where you'll store your chemicals. Um, these are particularly made for photographic chemicals, so they're light tight. Um, not that that's a big deal, but it's probably a, a better idea in terms of keeping these longer. Um, so anyway, so if you get three of those, the other thing I would do is go to the grocery store and get uh, a couple gallons of distilled water because you're going to use that a lot. Um, we are going to have to wash the negatives when we're done. And one thing that kind of happens is I want to keep tap water down to a minimum because tap water contains all kinds of garbage and junk that you really don't want on your negative. Um, the other thing, just as a word of safety here, and this is important, is that photochemicals really are not that dangerous to work with, but you want to be smart about it. Um, I have, now these I did buy at a grocery store and they say good cook on them, but never ever use the same um, or a measuring cups you're using for photochemicals and then go cook with them. That's just a stupid idea. So, you know, common sense, if you do not live alone and you live with somebody who does cook, you might want to go get some actual photo measuring cups so there's no confusion. Uh, just keep those dedicated specifically for that use. Um, keep them in the bathroom or wherever it is you're developing film and away from food and stuff like that. Now, all this can be done in a bathroom. And the reason I say a bathroom, two reasons. Uh, first of all, uh, you want running water. Well, you think, maybe well, I could do that in the kitchen too. Well, one thing that's nice about a bathroom is if you have a shower in the bathroom, 
when you turn on the shower in the hot water, the steam will take all the dust particles out of the air. So it's really a kind of a cool dust-free environment that's built into you know, most people's homes. And so that's really important because uh, dust is your enemy usually when you are uh, working with uh, film and paper and things like that. So anyway, but that's basic overview of the process. Okay, so you need to get some containers, you need to get some measuring cups, and then there's three chemicals, and none of these are expensive. Developer will probably run you Oh, around ten dollars for a for a, a couple or a bag of developer uh, that'll make you know a little over a gallon usually. Uh, fixer is um, I use this this Kodak excuse me for stop bath. I use an indicator stop bath, and the 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 cool thing about using an indicator stop bath is that it is this nasty pinkish color, um, and this will it turns yellow because you're going to dilute this with water, um, but it will turn bright purple. I believe when it's exhausted so you know by the color that it's no longer good so you can throw it out so what's nice is you can reuse this um until uh, you do see that color change and this will last forever uh, and then fixer probably about the same thing this is a uh, bag of powdered fixer that i have not made up yet mixed up and it just gives you some warnings on the back um, you also want to be careful <clears throat> if you have pets and things like that uh, and be real careful and do this slowly because this powder and the developer and the fixer can take to the air and it can kind of irritate you um, but if you if you're very careful about it use a funnel um, you should be good to go and just follow the directions on the package they're all here and uh, they're they're clear day it makes one gallon so anyway um, next time I'm going to show you uh, you know once you get your chemicals ready you feel comfortable with that um, then how do you develop your film and uh, anyway so we'll do that next time so it's been the art of photography thanks for watching